Hey everyone, welcome to this particular session. I hope you're having a great RTE conference. Uh, now, before we begin, let give me a second to share my screen with you. All right. So, uh, as the title suggests itself, we will be talking about the Android UI kit, and I guess you get a good enough idea from the title with the three lines of code how easy actually how easy it will be to actually make your own video calling or live video streaming application. So, if you have any questions during the workshop or conference uh, just post in the question section which is right below the chat window uh, and we'll pause in in between the sessions and after the session itself to answer all the questions and let's get started so a small introduction about myself i am here i'm working as a developer evangelist over here at agora and i'm working with this great team where we're working on several really cool projects and ui kit is actually one of them uh, over here, I'm working on two main technical stacks, that's Flutter and Android. So unlike many traditional developers, I started with Flutter first, and then to expand my technical skills, I started learning Android. Uh, at the bottom, you can find my Twitter handle, where I keep posting a lot of stuff about RTE and various cool projects that I'm working on, some technical stuff, in, which is cool in general. So you can check that out as well. Now. Talking about this particular session in brief, uh, we will be covering five main topics where we will begin by why UI kit, where we will see what exactly voice our idea while building this particular UI kit. Then we will be covering the goals of UI kit, where we will see what exactly we were planning on accomplishing while we were making this UI kit. And then we'll see the three glittery lines of code and using them in our Android application to make our own live video streaming application. And then we'll see how to use the UI kit you know, in, and integrate it into an Android application. And finally, we'll see how you can contribute to this particular effort and make it a much bigger success. All right, so let's start with why UI kit. So as a developer evangelist over here at Agora, I get a lot of chance to interact with a lot of developers as well as customers who are trying to integrate real-time engagement to their political platform. And, and I personally get a chance to help them out in their development journey. So with this, uh, I am able to uh, see what exactly is the problem that they face or where exactly they get stuck. And this helps me a lot in understanding what exactly, what kind of solution that they are looking for. So as an average developer that comes to Agora, the first question that they ask is mostly what is Agora? And the first the reply that they get is Agora provides real-time engagement SDK that's available across all the other development platforms. And this lets you add live video calling or live video streaming to your application, which is probably just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the feature that Agora provides. So an interested, intrigued, and a curious developer goes on to basically ask how they can actually implement this into their application. And with this, they get certain steps uh, which they have to follow in a particular application. Now, they follow a particular quick start guide, blogs, GitHub repositories, sample projects, and various other resources, where these steps come along with a certain block of code. And after writing this particular set of code and making their own GUI, before you even know, you have hundreds of lines of code ready just to make a simple video calling application. And with this, a developer who's super confused comes back to us seeking an easier way of integration. And after that, uh, and after building several projects myself, this is what I particularly ob observed. So the first observation was that there are certain methods in every application that is unique or that occurs in every application itself that you have to use. There are certain callbacks that you will be using no matter what, so most of the other features are added on top of these callbacks. And there, you might be having certain UI layout that's mostly common in these kind of applications. So with that, what I mean is that there might be buttons like to disconnect the call, to toggle your camera, to toggle your microphone, so on and so forth, which might be similar in most of these applications. And also you might be having a layout which might be a grid with something like n cross n grid or a floating layout where you have an active user in the middle and all the other users at the top. So 
keeping these three points in mind, we we planned on building this particular UI kit so as to reduce all the human efforts and make this UI kit a much easier task for any developer to integrate video calling or live video streaming in their particular application. So with that being said, let's look into what exactly can this UI kit actually do. So the first and the foremost thing that our UI kit offers is the low code and probably the biggest advantage of using the UI kit is it's low code itself. Now the three codes of line that it offers lets you you know, use the default UI of the application and start your video calling application with ease. We'll get into these three lines, what these three lines actually does uh, in a couple of minutes from now. The second thing that this particular, the, the second solution that the UI kit offer is a default UI. So with Agora UI kit, you get two default UIs. That is the floating layout that you can see over here and a grid layout where you get users into an interesting grid. Now with this UI, you get four built-in buttons as well as state widgets to represent the state of your microphone and camera. Uh, and the best and the biggest part of this particular UI kit is its customization. So to make your application your own, you obviously need to customize it so as not to use whatever default UI that comes with the application. You might be having a certain styling, a certain theme that's running in your particular application. So in that particular case, these customization acts as the best resource to make your application truly your own. So whatever you see on the particular app, be it the size of the button, color of the button, the color, the layout, the orientation, anything that you see is completely customizable. So you can adjust it to whatever style or theme that you're running in your particular application. Now, uh, allow me to share a video where we'll walk you through, where we walk you through on how you can actually make your own video calling up your own video streaming application. In fact, with just three lines of code. Let's have a look on how we can actually use the three lines of code to make our own live video streaming application. So let's begin by installing the Android UI Kit to our Android application. Now, the Android UI Kit is available through the Jitpack distribution. So let's head on to the Jitpack's website, that is the jitpack.io, to get all the build instructions. So simply head to the Jitpack website and search for the Android UI kit. This will show you all the latest versions of the Android UI kit itself. Now, simply clicking on the Get It button will give you the instructions for installing it. Now, let's use these instructions in our Gradle files to add the latest version of the Android UI kit. We will begin by adding the Jitpack library into our project level build Gradle. Now, if you're using Android Studio Artifacts just like me, then you can head into the settings Gradle file and add Jitpack over here instead. Now, once you have done that, save this file and move to the module level build Gradle and add the latest version of Android UI kit over here. Uh, and after doing that, simply click on sync now. This will sync all your Gradle files and make a install all the required dependencies. Now, once the installation is complete, head into the manifests folder and add all the required permissions for your application. These permissions are can range from microphone, your webcam, your Bluetooth, your network state, so on and so forth. So once you've added all these permissions, simply save this file and head on to the main activity file. So we begin by declaring an object of the Agora Video Viewer class. This Agora Video Viewer class acts as the starting point to our Agora Android UI kit. Now, after that, I am going to declare two more variables. That is the app ID as well as a token that I received from the Agora console. And once I've done that, I am going to create an onCreate method inside which I will be initializing my Agora UI kit and adding various methods to join the channel. So first things first, I am going to add a content view uh, which will be referring to an empty layout file. And after that, I am going to initialize my Agora Video Viewer class by passing the, uh, you know, passing the context and uh, my Agora Connection Data class, which takes a few additional parameters like app ID and app token. Now, once you've done that, you're going to add a content view, which basically casts the Agora Video Viewer class to your application. Now, over here, I'm using a frame layout uh, which uses the whole screen of the application. 
Now, basically, Agora Video Viewer over here will take the default UI of the UI kit and you by the match parent parameter, it will cast it to the whole application itself, occupying the whole screen. Now, once I've done that, simply go ahead and join a particular channel by using the join method and give a name to your channel over here. I'm using a channel named test and add a role for your user. Now, uh, let's say I'm going to use a role of a broadcaster. And with this, we have our own live video streaming application ready with just three lines of code. Now let's go ahead and see how it actually looks. So once you've built your application, you'll have a UI something similar to this, where you'll have your active user or a pinned user over here in the middle, uh, whereas all the other users inside the call will be present over here at the top inside a scroll view. Uh, now you can scroll through these users to get an idea of how many users are there in that call. At the bottom, you'll find four built-in buttons which is for toggling your camera, to toggle your microphone, to switch your camera, and finally to end the call. Over here, you'll find a state widget for your microphone, which basically gives you an idea whether your microphone is enabled or disabled. Now, let me join this particular call through my other device so as to give you an idea of how this application actually looks when there are two or more users in this app. So as you can see, when the other user joins, he's automatically added to the middle as he's the active speaker in this particular case. And also one thing to focus is that once, when you click on any other user at the top, it automatically gets pinned to the middle. So this is how easy it is to actually use the Android UI kit. So go ahead and try it out and make as many customizations. All right, uh, I hope that you were able to follow along with the video. And I, I hope that you were able to see how easy it is to actually use the whole UI kit and make those three lines into, into your own application. Now, I'm going to pause briefly to answer any of the questions that you might be having at this point. So if you don't know, you can post any of your questions in the question section, which is there on the right, just below the chat section. So the first question that I see over here is by Tadas, uh, where he's mentioning about uh, if we can use this particular UI kit with Jetpack Compose or not. So the answer is yes, you can use uh, Jetpack Compose along with this particular UI kit. In fact, we will be showcasing another application or we will be integrating this particular UI kit into an application that's built completely using Jetpack Compose. Uh, the next question that we have is by Ekanj, do the UI kits work with each other, for example, iOS with Android? Uh, the answer is again, yes. Uh, the UI kits have interoperability between uh, all the UI kits. So you can basically join from your web device, your Android, your iOS, any device that you are working on with. Uh, then the next question that we have is from Samyak. He says, is it possible to customize the UI of an app built using this particular library? And again, the answer is still a yes. So, and that's probably the best feature of this UI kit that it offers the maximum customization that's possible. So whatever layout that you see on your application is completely customizable. So let's say that you wanted to change the color of the button or you wanted to change the layout orientation, anything that you want to do is completely customizable. Uh, then finally, we have a question from Sir Sharma who says, does this work with Kotlin? Uh, and yes, it works with Kotlin. This particular UI kit, in fact, is built in Kotlin. So you can use that particular UI kit to integrate into your Kotlin app or even in your Java app uh, if you wish. All right. Uh, I think uh, that's all the questions that we have for now. If you have any questions uh, further, feel free to uh, ask them in the question section. Uh, but for now, let's move on and cover the next part. So uh, the next part that we have is UI kit in action. And this is probably the biggest part in this particular session, since you might not be just having a video calling or a video streaming standalone application. You might be using video calling or video streaming as a feature to your application. So in that particular case, integrating this particular UI kit acts as the biggest asset for you. Now over here, as a demo, I've created this app called FaceChat that helps with three main features. The first feature being, it helps you find all the friends that are online. Secondly, it sends call invitations or call, call notifications 
to the other person when you ring them and finally it adds a one to one video calling using the agora android ui kit so i'm sure that you must have seen these three features in several applications that you have must that you have might used so probably in the chat section itself just drop a name of few of the applications that you might have used which have similar features in the meanwhile let's continue with the presentation and see what the actual app flow looks like so we begin by adding a username a unique username in fact uh, into, the, into the login screen and when a user joins he's thrown to a particular lobby where they can find all your friends and users that are online so by clicking on a particular user sends a notification to them where they can either answer the call or decline the call and based on their answer they either remain in the lobby or they're sent to the next page that is the call screen now before moving to the call screen there is a unique channel name that's generated and is shared between the two users itself so as to keep the call in just between the two users uh and secondly uh, the layout that you can see over here is the standard layout that was built using the three lines of code now uh, since this app face chat is using its own theme with of blue and red let's customize the layout accordingly so uh, this is the whole code that i will be using for the customizations right now uh, this particular code involves the the three lines of code that is required to set up your ui kit as well as the customizations that i will be adding so let's break this down and see what actually it looks like so the first thing that you need to do is add an agora settings method that that basically helps with most of the customizations that the agora android ui kit offers so to do that in the agora video viewer class itself we add an agora settings method over here it is referring to a function called a lot of customizations which we will be declaring in the coming steps uh, then the next customization that i am going to add is in fact the styling or the layout so by default we get a layout of a floating view that's available over here but since it's a one to one video calling i believe that a grid layout makes much more sense because you will be able to see both the users in a screen which is divided equally so to do that you can simply use the style method and change the layout from floating to grid uh, with just one single line of code and uh, instead if you were making your own ui you'll probably have to write hundreds of lines of code uh, just to make this particular grid layout uh, moving on if you wanted to change the colors of the button or change the color of the state widgets over here then in that particular case you can simply use the agora settings class and use the colors method over here to change the color of all the all the methods that's available so over here i'm changing the color of mic flag to red and changing the color of this background over here of button background to transparent so that there is a much brighter contrast with my particular application uh, moving on if you wanted to remove a particular built-in button or you wanted to change the order of those built-in buttons you can use the enable buttons uh, method to provide the list of those particular buttons which you actually want so for example that if you wanted but just three buttons that is camera mic and end you can provide that in this particular fashion to have that in the order so over here uh, if you missed out i removed this particular button over here for switch camera uh, in order to because since it's a one to one video calling application uh, a front camera view would make much more sense and one more thing to add over here if you wanted to change the order of any of these buttons so assumingly you wanted to keep this end button in the middle you can just push this end button to the one th position over here and just swap mic and end camera over here and finally to add an extra button you can simply use the extra buttons method and pass in an object of the agora buttons class now this agora button class over here helps you to again, completely customize your button so you can set up our image resource you can set up your colors theme and exactly a click action for it so over here i have set up an image resource which uses a drawable star off and on click action for this 
I it changed this particular image from start off to start on, and at the same time, it changes its color from gray to green. And the main click action over here that I'm adding is a beauty filter that's offered by the Agora SDK, so as to remove all the tiredness from my face. So this particular effect, oh sorry, this particular method is just added over here using the Agora Kit uh, Agora Kit class over here, which helps you uh, add all the beauty effects that's provided by the Agora SDK. And that's it in terms of the customization that we will be adding in this particular face chat application. Now, these are not just the customizations that are provided by the Android UI kit. Uh, there are several other customizations that the UI kit actually provides, but probably the session is too small to even cover all those customizations. So I'll suggest, you know, you guys, to, highly suggest you guys to check out the documentation, to check out all the customizations that we offer and make your UI truly your own. And coming back to the question that Tadas asked about using it with Jetpack, uh, so Jetpack, this particular application, you know, the whole layout for this was built using Jetpack itself. So you you can see how easy it is to actually use the, um, the whole layout and distribute it while your application runs. So moving on to the final part of this pre uh, presentation where we, uh, where we will be discussing on how you can contribute to this particular effort. So this particular SDK is completely open sourced and it shows how you can actually use the Agora Android SDK in the best practices possible for Android. So you can go to the source code and have a look at what actually is going on behind this particular UI kit and use it in your particular application itself. If you have any suggestions, feature requests, bugs, or bug requests, or uh, any feature uh, that you want us to add in this particular UI kit, you can add that into the issue tab itself. Further on, if you want to help us out even more, you can add that. You can uh, refer to the uh, README file that's there in the repository, which covers the roadmap through which uh, you can use any of the particular feature and add a PR for that same. Well. That's it for this particular session. I hope you enjoyed it. There's a QR code down below which links to the GitHub repository for this particular rep, um, for this particular UI kit. There's also a Jetpack distribution for this particular UI kit, so you can simply integrate with one single line of code. And other than that, you also have my Twitter handle over there. So if you want to discuss more about this UI kit or want to talk about RTE in general, you can ping me there as well. And after the session, we have another session being hosted by Ikan Sharoda, where he will be discussing uh, how to use UIKit with a cross-platform network that is React Native. So stick around for that session as well. And in the meanwhile, if you have any questions, kindly post that in the question section. I'll be happy to answer them. All right, so we have a question by Max over here where is he is asking how much code is needed to add a new button to the bottom. So uh, technically speaking, if you wanted just a button to be added, you will be probably, uh, you can probably add a button with its layout, its click action and everything with probably just five or six lines of code uh, by using the extra buttons parameter, extra buttons method itself. So let me pull back to this particular slide once. Uh, over here, as you can see, this extra buttons method just takes an object of the Agora button class. And with that, you just add the click action. Now, the click action can depend upon your particular use case itself on how you actually want to scale this application. All right, I think that answers all the questions that we have over here. All right. Thank you so much for joining in. Uh, please stay tuned for the next session that we have for React Native UI Kit, which is being conducted by Ikan Shayoda. So we'll see you there.